Hello, everyone. Welcome into another edition of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Tony Sapita. Today, I am joined again by White Sox expert and my season ticket partner, Jason Frank. How are you doing today, Jason? Doing great. Got the all-star or home run derby on. So how about you? Yeah, I am also kind of watching in the background. I'm definitely recording it so I can go back and make sure I can uh, live tweet at 25 minutes behind everyone else until I catch up. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, the home run derby, I'll start with this little fun fact for everyone before we kind of get into get into the show. Uh, so the announcer, I, I don't remember who it was exactly. They brought up kind of a good point about exit velocity and like the actual speed, the miles per hour that these balls are traveling. So I've been uh, violently addicted to storm chasers recently. Phenomenal show, chase around tornadoes, etc. So the announcer of the home run derby pointed out uh, that a like 110 mile per hour home run. I think they compared it to hurricanes, but I'll compare it to tornadoes. So Luis Roberts grand slam was hit 111 miles per hour. An EF2 tornado. So what's considered a strong tornado starts at 110 miles per hour. That That's insane. Crazy. Can you just imagine oh. just uh, Luis Roberts Bunch grand the Luis <laughs> Roberts <laughs> just swing it around <laughs> smacking your house what I, I that's crazy and also actually kind of puts it in a good perspective to understand how insane all that is so speaking mm-hmm. of insane uh it's crazy to think that the boys are all the way back the White the Sox are, hot. are back in town they truly are <laughs> they are about to be back in town too because they got yeah. the Guardians <laughs> in Chicago after the break um the case for Dylan Cease being quite possibly the biggest all-star snub in the history of ever, of all sports, of all history, ever, ever. The Roman times, all times. Um, And then just kind of finally, what lies ahead? What are we looking at for the second half of the season? So let's get into real quick. The White Sox are back. This is uh, outstanding news, I would say. I, I always believed, I'd like to say I always believe, but obviously if you follow us on Twitter or, you know, even just been following the podcast, we've, We've been cautiously optimistic that they turn it around. Time was running out. Time was starting to run yeah. out. Uh, it still is, you know, kind of they're in a weird spot. They're definitely at um, kind of a, a tipping point, a turning point, whatever you want to call it. Uh, however, they did outscore the Twins 32 to 7 in the four game series. Sheesh. That's insane. That's so many runs. Uh, they also <laughs> recorded 50, 5 0, 50 hits in the series. I will say I did count that just by going back in the box score. So I'm not, if I'm off one or two on these stats, um, you can let me know in the comments. Uh, they are only three games out of first place now, and we are officially back to 500, and we have all the momentum in the world. Jason, what do you got on the Sox being back? Yeah, we are 7-3 and three in our last 10. I don't know the last time we were able to say that. <laughs> the bats are back, too. In the last two weeks, we've scored 6-7-8-9. 11, 12, and 13 runs, all while holding our opponents to four runs or under 10 times. So pitching is back too. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the team is just happier. I mean, we saw Jose doing that sliding thing in the dugout with everyone around him laughing. I believe it was in that 12 run game against the twins. Don't know for sure, but the team seems lighter happier and smiling again and i really don't think that's just a coincidence that eloy is back around the time we're starting to get happier again the guy just brings a presence to the team makes baseball fun again i totally agree and it is even though obviously i know he's hurt again and we can get into that maybe Mm. you know later i he'll be fine i think personally seems like it was kind of just right leg soreness um it does feel like yeah, like you said, like a, a, a weight has been lifted off their shoulders. They're kind of yeah. just – they're playing baseball again. They're playing a game. They're out there having fun. Uh, what was <laughs> – my last comment on the Jose thing before we move into uh, the Dylan Cease topic is that's just concrete, right? Isn't it just sliding on concrete? That's horrifically dangerous. Yeah, I would hurt my is. knee. I would <laughs> scratch my knee so it, hard. I'd be bleeding. And he did it twice, too. It wasn't just once. <laughs> I'd be on at least a 60-day uh, IL. So that was wild. Happy he's okay. Happy the boys enjoyed it. That's all that matters. Yeah. Maybe should shouldn't have the, one of the oldest guys on the team doing that. But, hey, whatever makes him happy. These guys are tougher than I am. That's a fact. Speaking mm. of uh, tough situations, yeah. uh, Dylan Cease. So the all-star voters are up there on the list. And I, if you guys watch my, any of our bulls stuff, 
up there with the schedule makers um, on who is the devil of the week for me. And so the all-star voters and whether that's the fans or I, I was kind of confused on exactly what they're doing. Cause I think you can still be named by coaches and players after the fans vote. Uh, Dylan seats sees was snubbed from the all-star game when he absolutely deserved it. I think TA deserved it, of course, but I think there's even a, a better case for Dylan Cease. Jason, why don't you uh, tell us what that case is? Yeah, I mean, since everyone seems to be emotionally voting, I might as well just drop a few stats since no one seemed to look at those even remotely when they were trying to figure out who's going to pitch, let alone be the starter, because honestly, Cease deserved to be the starting pitch. Well, everyone knows about baseball. Nobody cares about the stats. You know, it's all about just, you know, just go out there, hit, you know, whatever looks good, go with your gut. That's what everyone says about baseball. Right? Exactly. That's what you should do. Exactly. Yeah, Don't yeah. look at stats at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's the least important uh, sport for all uh, statistically. Uh, when you're looking at stats, yeah. I don't know. I'm just rambling now. <laughs> it's crazy. That's why I put my point. It's, it's, it's absolutely insane. Especially I've read, obviously these stats, you've probably heard some of these stats, but hearing mm-hmm. them all together here is just insane. It's, so so I guess we'll just talk about Cease's last game. First quick mention mm-hmm. seven innings pitched one hit. One hit, mm-hmm. eight strikeouts on 94 pitches. The guy was wheeling and dealing, probably no a little runs. pissed off. No runs. Yes, no runs. Probably was pissed off because he deserved a spot and he didn't get it. Here are Cease's first half stats. 150 plus Ks. So he leads the MLB in strikeouts right now, which I did call at the beginning of the season that he would lead the MLB in strikeouts at the end of the season. And then K's per nine, he's got 12 and a half. That's first in MLB. He has less than a 2.2 ERA at 2.15. He is third in the MLB. And he is fourth in the MLB with holding his batters above below 200 batting average. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, that's mm-hmm. obviously we're going get to into, get into kind of how this matches up and stuff <laughs> with, previous, uh, yeah. with previous greats. Uh, but mm-hmm. that it's insane that I get, you know, okay. If he led the league in strikeouts, maybe he just pitched the most, whatever it is, right. you know, there, there's definitely, um, you know, arguments you can make because I know we were joking that stats don't matter in baseball, but they do. Um, and right. you could obviously make a case for anybody with anything really. And but, uh, I mean, if you talk about starts, at least when I looked four out of the five top strikeout leaders all had 19 starts. So I, the innings were a little different, but some of that has to do with how good you pitch. So yeah, you, you got the same amount of starts, same amount of chances to open up the game. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And if uh, you want to get into these other, I, I love the rest of the stats you got here. I just keep looking ahead. If you want to hit on those as well. <laughs> so I've got a few groups that Cease has entered because of a few stats. So I'll kind of rattle those off and then tell you who's also in that group. So 150 strikeouts on less than 80 hits in the first half. Besides Cease this year, the only four others to do it are Verlander, 2019, Scherzer, 2017, Jose Fernandez, 2016, and then Pedro Martinez in 2001. So nice group to be in. Yep. Next little group we got AL in AL history, the most in the first 87 games of a season – had the most number of starts with eight plus strikeouts and two or fewer earned runs. Cease, 2022. Pedro Martinez, 99 this time. Randy, 1995. Roger Clemens, 1988. Bob Feller, chugging along, 1946. Good for you, Bobby. Yeah. Uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, names to be, or pretty good company to keep. Sorry, that's what I'm going for. Yeah. There. Yeah, when you're just... I like that you were just saying, yeah, Randy and we, everyone. I'd like to think everyone knows about Randy thing. Johnson right away. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, that's insane. You could just say, yeah, Pedro, Randy, Roger, and everyone would be like, oh, exactly. yeah, of course. I know who you're talking about. Right. It, who knows? It's in, ridiculous. In 10 years, we'll be saying Dylan. Okay. Of course. Cease. Yeah. Dylan Cease. Right. He was an all-star. Like this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah like. Should have been. <laughs> yeah. And then in his last 10 games that he's pitched, so the span of 10 starts, he's allowed three earned runs on 79 strikeouts. 
And the only other three people to ever do this, three earned runs in a 10-game span, was Jake Arrieta. We all remember that season with the Cubs. Dude was a monster. Chris Sale, Jacob deGrom, and then our boy Dylan Cease, who in this last 10, it, he pitched 58 innings, had 34 hits, allowed three earned runs, like I said earlier, and had an ERA of point. Four seven. So, and I mean, in his last ten, I wrote it down. It's not like he had one bad outing where he let up three runs, which isn't even a bad outing. His last ten were zero, 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 one, 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 zero, zero. I mean, what else does he have to do? <laughs> it's truly, a, and if it was like maybe the last four starts, he was going nuts. You know, something where it's. Okay, it was exactly. close to all star voting. People were kind of get their votes in and made up their mind. But yeah, not only I mean, and he did good at the start of the season too, but just these last 10, 10 exactly. starts. And you know, a starting pitcher, you start every five games, that's minimum 50, you know, like 50 it's, games. It's, it's ridiculous. It truly is. The it biggest truly. snub of all time. I don't know. Maybe this mustache scared them away. I don't know. It makes no sense. He does feel like he should be wearing like a black hat. He's like a villain now. Uh, he's he like a really uh, the black hat cowboy, you know, that they're, they're always trying to kill at the start of the Western movie. He really is. And uh, he's, I, he's like an emotionless assassin out there, and they don't give him the respect he deserves. Yeah, and I saw another fun little stat since we mentioned Pedro Martinez, obviously. The only yeah. other, uh, at least recently, but uh, in, I don't know how far back it goes or if it's ever, uh, but the only other recently, at least, uh, pitcher to not be an all-star but win the Cy Young is Pedro Martinez in 2001. So if he's putting up numbers like 2001 Pedro Martinez and he is able to pull off that Cy Young, I mean, it, it's okay then if he gets a Cy yeah, Young. But it, it is truly a miscarriage of justice. That, I believe I used that phrase correctly, that he is not an all-star. Not, I get if he wasn't named the starter, whatever. That's that's fan yeah. voting. And I, you know, I understand fan voting, whatever. I I'll vote for, I voted for all White Sox. I get it. Right. And the city of Chicago split in two. So. Yeah, but to not be named. And then also there's these other guys. And I know it was the argument, oh, well, he can't even pitch because he's scheduled to pitch uh, too close to when the actual All-Star game is, so he wouldn't even be able to pitch anyway. That's yeah. fine. Name him an honorary. Albert Pujols is in the home run derby. He has six home runs this year. Yeah. I know the he's, dude's at, he's listed at 40. He's 45. Like, come on. <laughs> it's just, it's absolute. I, I think him and uh, him and Miguel Cabrera are, are both in the all-star game too. On like the commissioner. Uh, I don't know what it's called. The commissioner. Like the list, list, what they did for like Dirk and someone else. Yeah. Which I NBA. like, I, I'm happy they did that. But at the same time, it's like, there are things you could do. Not just, well, our hands are tied. I may be the commissioner, but I don't make the rules. Like, yes, you, yes, you do. That's exactly yeah. how. Uh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, if you want to finish up these stats here, we can. Uh, yeah, I got two legend. more that'll just make everybody angry. If you're a Sox fan, I guess. Uh, he's the fastest pitcher in White Sox history to 500 career strikeouts. I guess that one's more happy note. <laughs> Surpassing Chris Sale. And so along with that, he's the only pitcher to ever strike out at least 500 and allow less than 350 hits in his first career 77 games. So he's been wheeling and dealing for a while. I think why we remember him not being as good early on is because when he would have a blow up inning, he let up like 10 runs but when he was wasn't doing his, that he, he was striking people out he was pitching well so i was at his first start ever for the chicago his mlb debut and it was yeah i think it was the very first inning i think he had like 35 pitches let up i think he let up like four runs whatever yeah. it was it may not have been four but it felt like four runs whatever yeah and i was like oh man but i mean you could just tell his stuff was good it was there he just had to exactly. hone it in and it is it is just beautiful this is what baseball is all about when people are like oh my gosh, this guy isn't good yet. How is he not good yet? Yeah. For basketball, okay. I get the argument. That's kind of what's been happening in recent years. Football too. But baseball, right. we have the developmental leagues. We have the minor league system for a reason. We have, like, these guys are getting drafted out of high school. They're first, you know, they're yeah. they're playing against grown men. Uh, Albert Pujols and Miguel Cabrera, perfect example. Guys that have dominated, they're playing against 40-year-old men who have been dominating for 20 years. It just takes time. And this is what happens when you wait. What happens, yeah. it pays off, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. If you want to hit us with the last one here, then we can, uh, we'll move on. So, last one. He's only pitcher in baseball history with 
150 Ks, 80 or fewer hits, and 25 or fewer E earned runs in his first 19 starts of a season. If he's only pitcher to do it, you would think if you're in a category like that, you'd get a start. And then I found something on Twitter. I won't read through it. I just brought it up. But he was better or equal to Paul Blackburn and Nestor Cortez in like 10 categories and win starts innings pitch era strikeout strikeouts nine quality starts opponent ops starts with zero earned runs starts with 10 plus k's all these types of stats he's better than them and he didn't even get a nod i just threw my phone because i pissed off reading that anyways <laughs> yeah no, we'll it- focus on the future now of course. It's time to move on. We got a second half of the season to rock and make it into the playoffs. Absolutely. And I, yeah, building off of that into what lies ahead, I, and kind of like I think what happened last year with Tim Anderson and kind of some of these guys is they just, they felt the disrespect. And I think we've been feeling, I tweet about that. They, they played this last series like a team that, like a little brother that's just been getting beat on and beat on and beat on all season. Yeah. The media's ripping them apart. Oh, they don't even like baseball. This, that, even I, I, we're doing it too. We've been saying right. it, like, oh, what's wrong with these guys? Whatever. And they're just showing us all what they got. It's baseball. It takes time. Water always finds its level. So yeah. I can definitely see Dylan Cease and the boys coming out, trying to prove something. And we have the absolute perfect schedule to do that. I almost listed Thank the entire gosh. schedule remaining because it's just so <laughs> I can't explain how potentially yeah i'd have to look up straight the schedule exactly whatever but this is an yeah. easy schedule so we got four against the guardians uh at home right out of the uh the break two at coors field so uh dinger city that's gonna be awesome hopefully bet yeah, over we'll bet on everyone to hit home runs <laughs> yeah that's I hot. take every single player in the lineup to hit a home run yeah um, i would take yo-yo because yo-yo learned how to hit again so he's been incredible the team's just yeah. been – we've been incredible. And I, I think – and hopefully this is a, okay, they'll take a little break, rest up, everyone get healthy, and then yeah. we get – hopefully don't lose any momentum. I don't think we will because um, then we got the A's, the Royals, the Rangers, the Royals, the Tigers. That's our next, like – That just makes me smile. Yeah, that's <laughs> at least 15 games. There might be a four-game or thrown in – a four-game series thrown in there. Um, then, then the Astros come to town for four. Hopefully we split that. I will say, you know, I'm not going to get a, a, over my skis on this and be like, oh, we're going to sweep them in four. But yeah. the first time they're in town since the playoff series with the most incredible playoff atmosphere in Chicago history, in my opinion, that I've been alive for. It was that, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> which was game three last year. The cheater chants are going to be out. That'll be fun. Loud, get loud. And then even after that, I, I think we have one. we have one more against a decent team right after that. I think the Twins... Um, mm-hmm. And then we had the Orioles and the Mariners mixed in, but it's again, the Tigers, the Royals, like the other mediocre teams, who knows the Orioles and Mariners may cool off by the time we play them too. Yeah. Uh, just like we caught the Orioles at the wrong time, <laughs> you know, right. coming around <laughs> we did. so these last couple months are built. They are built for this late season run that we know this team can give us. Yeah. Uh, I just looked it up. We do have the easiest strength of schedule the second half of the year. So Boom. pulled that right out of my freaking noggin right before yeah. this i didn't even this is just something i added in at the last second and i can just tell like oh my this must be a mistake this, <laughs> there's no way uh so that's incredible i i'm excited jason what are your uh what are your final thoughts here i am just excited for the second half of the season i know it's been an up and down start but I really do have faith in this team. I don't know if Vegas has us as the favorite to win our division, but it just seems like the snowball took a while to get rolling, but it's slowly starting to pick up here during the middle of the season. And I really think we're going to hit the playoffs strong. It's just, it's taken us a while. I mean, if you think about it, the last two years, I believe with this team, we've started out really hot. We got cold, we got hot, and then we got cold come playoff time. So I'm hoping this is just something new for us, and they start out cold, and they're just going to kind of slowly roll into it, and we'll hit the playoffs hot. So I'm just hoping for the best I know, but I'm feeling good. We've been roping doping the whole year. We've roped them the first half, and now we're ready to dope them. Um, (laughs) To answer your question about the AL uh, Central 
uh, odds. The Minnesota Twins are plus 110. The White Sox are plus 125. The Guardians being plus 450 and everyone else being uh, like the Tigers are plus 50,000. The Royals are plus 90,000. So I think <laughs> they, uh, it's a three horse race to it, two yeah. probably at most. Um, yeah. So, hey, the odds have swung in our favor, which is good to see. You know, mm-hmm. Vegas what, Vegas knows what they're doing when they set these lines. Oh, yeah. It, so, it's exciting. The boys are absolutely buzzing. Summer is mm-hmm. in full swing. The Midsummer Classic is here. I believe that's what they call the All-Star Game. Yep. Um, yep. Enjoy the Home Run Derby, even though you already watched it when this is out. Enjoy the All-Star Game tonight, where Dylan C. should be. But Tim Anderson, who is, for some reason, batting behind Byron Buxton, which is another thing that we don't even need to hit on um hopefully so Hend- dumb so dumb uh hopefully liam hendricks will be in there i believe he is going i know he was named um mm-hmm. i believe he's gonna play uh gonna pitch hopefully he'll close it out considering he's the best closer in baseball so yeah with that that'll do it for this episode of just another year chicago my name is tony Sapita. thank you again to white Sox expert jason frank for joining me again today thanks for tuning in everyone till next t- time south siders see ya see ya